So was nowadays, you, you see yourself as a producer more than an engineer? Um, you know, I've made so many records that I'm, I'm real picky about what I record now. So if Terrence comes to me and says, you know, I have a soundtrack I want to do for a movie, yes, I work with Terrence. Um, I work, I think the difference now is that I'm used to working with really great musicians that don't need all the stuff that, that, that Pro Tools brings. Um, all the ability to do all the editing, uh, either you know, uh, rearranging stuff or correcting somebody's pitch or you know, the fact that the guy couldn't really play drums, but you know, so you have to grid the drums and do all that. I, I just can't do that. So I really am very picky about who I work with, and so I prefer to work with people that can actually do it by themselves. Do you think that Pro Tools was, I'm, and I hear a lot of guys talk about Pro Tools being the death of creative music. Uh, do you oh, feel that? No, absolutely not. Uh, I'll give you a good example. I, I work with a, a Welsh singer um, who's becoming real popular. She was just on the Today Show. and. Um, because the budget was not that great and we needed strings, we found a guy in England who does unbelievable string arrangements. So we send him Pro Tools projects and he fills them in. And the beauty is when I get it back, I can move those phrases all over the place. So for things like that, it's really, really phenomenal to take something and be able to manipulate it that way. I can do things that obviously I could never do on tape, and that's a blessing. Um, uh, we put organ on, a, on the wrong master take of a song. Because what I, I, I still like to record in analog, sorry, but I do. Uh, so I'll record basic tracks in analog onto a studer, and then when I get ready to mix, I take it and I put it onto Pro Tools. And I still think that sounds better than necessarily putting it right to Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. So um, my assistant engineer made a boo-boo. And he took the wrong take of a song. And it was a little bit faster than the real master take. And so when I went to mix the song, I kept thinking, there's something wrong, something wrong. And the artist assured me, no, 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 this is the right take. And I said, no, 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 this is not. And I went back, and sure enough, the take that was the master take was just a little bit slower. So now my assistant engineer had to take the organ phrase by phrase yeah. and insert it in the proper take. But because the other one was faster, uh, it, they were a little short, <laughs> all the phrases. And uh, by the time he was through, everything fit perfectly. I, don't, I still, to this day, haven't figured out how he does it, but he could do it. For those things, for those kinds of, of, of particular editing problems and, and also creative things, I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm one of those guys who doesn't use a lot of EQ when I record. I'd rather buy a really good mic and have a really good mic preamp and figure out what mics sound good on what. So for me, um, I'm not big into plug-ins. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not. I don't do that kind of music where I necessarily need that. Um, so for that, for me, it's no big deal. It's turning into a really good um, recording and editing medium. And as the converters get better and better, the sound gets better and better, and I use it more and more. Up until we got our new Pro Tools HD system, I, I just wouldn't use it. I could hear such a big difference between the analog. And also, if you, if you mix and you take like a, a Pro Tools mix and then take a half inch mix to a mastering right. guy and ask him, which one are you going to use? <coughs> There's never been a time where they would say the Pro Tools mix. No, because the analog just sounded so much better. And the emulation programs that they have stink. Mm -hmm. The tape sounds really, really good. Well, you know, it, it's, such, it's interesting that the, the, the progress in audio used to get be involving um, a, a higher level of quality of sound. 
And now with the iPod and compression and MP3, it's a lower level quality of sound. That's the advances are all about that. How does that reconcile with all this money and time you spend mixing? I think it's something that you just have to accept. Um, either you are going to try and do your best to make the most sonically beautiful thing that you can, or the most sonically ugly, whatever it is that you're into, because I know people that really ugly is beautiful. You know, the, the <laughs> crappier it is, the dirtier it is, they just love that, and that's great. But they want to keep that, and at a certain point, you have to just give it up. You know, that people are going to mess with it, and they're going to make MP3s out of it. Though I must tell you that the AACs that, that you, you, know, you get from Apple sound better than any cassette we ever That's made. Good. So our expectations are, are very high now. And I think eventually you know, we'll have iPods that have huge amounts of storage. And so you'll use Apple lossless, and you right. won't lose anything. And evidently, a lot of people are storing now their collections in Apple lossless. Right. 